just the, uh... God, no, this may sound crass, but just the regular garden variety type burglar? Oh, well, that's what he started out as, but then Geraldine showed up at the door and he had to hit her over the head, and I think he thought he killed her. I think that's the part that shocks me the most, that Geraldine was hurt. Well, obviously she wasn't hurt as badly as he thought. Because I think he thought that since he killed one person, he might as well kill two. Um, do you think he felt he had to kill you so you couldn't identify him? And he would have, too. And then Skye showed up and shot him. And I think I need some more wine. Oh, wait, let me get it for you. Nope. Stay right where you are, little mother. I can do it. Oh. The person I actually feel sorry for is Skye, though, because you know he, he can't believe he actually killed somebody. I think he deserves a medal. But all the police want to do is ask him questions. That's only to be expected. You know, the thing that I remember the most is when he stood there in the doorway with that shotgun in his arm. He looked like some kind of an avenging angel. <laughs> an avenging angel with a double barrel shotgun, huh? <laughs> mm. But you know, he knew there was something wrong in the house. He sensed it. Doesn't that tell you something? What, because he's got ESP or something? Something. <laughs> I think maybe we're soulmates. He knew that there was something wrong in the house, and he came back. And that makes me feel wonderful. You know, you look pretty good, too. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, well, you, you look sort of radiant. Oh, well, I'm a little high. No, come on, I mean, after after that awful experience last night. Oh, but that's what I'm trying to say. It was exciting. Because it proved to me that, that Skye was more than I thought. I mean, he's much different than the man I thought I married. Come up here and change that lock, Mr. Whitney. I didn't think you want that ugly old padlock there. If I had wanted the lock changed, I would have asked you to change it, Gunter. Well, you know me, Mr. Whitney. Uh, I like to do things without you telling me. That's called uh, taking the initiative. Sometimes you take too much initiative, Gunter. Well, I want to earn my money, you know. If you're so interested in the padlock, what were you doing inside there? Oh, I thought I'd just clean it up a little bit. It looks quite neat to me. Yes, sir. It sure looks neat. Uh, whatever happened to all that stuff, uh, if you don't mind my asking? I do mind. Now, please leave. Uh, what about the lock, Mr. Whitney? Don't worry about it. There isn't going to be any lock. What do you mean? Well, 
Besides, my study gun, it's not a secret hiding place. The only reason I had it locked up before was uh, because things are so disorganized inside. Now things are very organized. So, no luck, huh? I'm glad that you understand. Now, I'm going to take a little nap. Don't disturb me unless it's uh, unavoidable. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, any particular time you want me to wake you, sir? Yes. Wake me in about an hour. Yes, sir. Your lordship. Oh, what did he do with all that stuff? Get your chance, and without all this pressure. No, I won't. Scott won't let me dance in the chorus. I know he won't. No, he'll never do that. His famous pride won't allow it. He's paid too much money to introduce you as the dynamic new star. He's going to be very angry. Yeah, he's going to try to change your mind again, just like last time. Well, he can't. It's too late. You're darn right, and you're not going to do this by yourself. I can't let you do it for me. I told you that once. And you failed once, too, remember? He put his arm around you and sweet talked you. Then he threatened me to make sure that uh, I wouldn't encourage you. What did you say? Nothing. The point is that you just have to do did it right. Did you say when he threatened you? Joy, no, no, it's just words. Just words? Was it just words when he sent Gunther and those men to break your leg? Forget it, Jody, huh? All he did was try to bluff me. I'm not afraid of him. Well, I am. I'm afraid of him and I'm afraid of Gunther. Well, the police are keeping their eye on Gunther. You can be sure of that. And he's not going to dare try anything over it. I promise you. The only thing we have to be afraid of is keeping our nerve. We've got to stick up for what we believe. Do you believe in me? Oh, of course I do. You know I do. As a person and a performer. You're a great dancer. You'll be even greater. Why is it you always make me feel so much better? Mm -hmm. I'm going with you, Jody. No. No, it's all right. I... I can handle this. I, I really think I can. All right. Just be careful. Yes, I am. Even after that nightmare of last night, I'm so happy. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Um, obviously, Sky made quite an impression on you last night, Raven. I just hope it isn't because... Well, it isn't because he shot a man. Well, let's face it. Not every woman has a man who will kill for her. Well, that's true enough. But that's not really it. I'm just discovering what a deep and complex person my husband is. Well, now, did you make this discovery in, in one night? You might say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I 
I'm terribly sorry. But Mrs. Timmons makes a cake. Oh. <laughs> I think she made it just especially for you, so that if I don't offer it to you, she'll be very hurt. If you'll excuse me, I'll be right back. Of course. and take on skies. I remember the first time that I saw it. Where? Switzerland. Sky was there for three months. He was killing time. We had a lot in common. We were the same age, same height, same approximate build. We both loved to ski. We both loved to live like millionaires. That was the difference. You see, he really was a millionaire many times over, but uh, Jeff Brown was a pauper. So you became his friend? He had three months to spend there before this enormous inheritance came into his lap. He told me about it the first day that we met. About all the money that was waiting for him back here in the States. Not that he was hurting for funds at the time. I mean, his monthly allowance allowed him to... He could have rented the whole chateau. Jeff Brown couldn't even afford a little room. Can I tempt you? Mm, yes. Mrs. Timmons would be very hurt if you didn't have any. I just hope it's not uh, too rich for you. Nothing is too rich for me. You ought to know that. <laughs> There's no reason she can't go home tomorrow. Not that oh, I could great. stop her if I tried. <laughs> well, that sounds like Geraldine, all right. The concussion's no longer a problem. I'm just a little worried because she's so weak, and I hate to think of her all alone in that hotel suite. Well, why don't you just hire a nurse or something? Geraldine, <laughs> hire a nurse? My oh, Lord, the thought of it. any kind of a paid companion, even a nurse, would just insult her pride. <laughs> oh, no. Well, at least we could invite her over to our house, only where would we put her? Well, what? She could scrunch up on that little Victorian sofa we okay. have in the living room. And that's nice. Somehow, I can't quite see Geraldine sleeping on our living room sofa. As a matter of fact, I can't see Geraldine sleeping anywhere except in a queen-size bed full of canopies and four posters. Yes, she does give that impression, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> It is getting to be a problem. What? I never realized until lately how small our house actually is. Well, we didn't count on having a live-in sister when we bought the place, did we? No. no. Now, Adam's getting to the age where he would love to have his little friends over, only where are they going to sleep? Well, put them up in the attic in the trundle bed. Miles, we can't They're keep just doing this. Children, why not? Then there's a dog. Well, you see, that's the problem. Muffin takes up most of the space in the Now, hall. Miles, it's true. We're getting overcrowded. I mean... Think of all those nights that we couldn't have Mrs. Goodman stay over. Yes, I rather enjoyed them. <laughs> think of getting your message. Am I making myself I think obvious you are, enough? Yes. Well, listen, it's not as if I hadn't thought of it myself. I think you're right. I think we need some kind of a change. Especially now that we're talking about a possible addition to the family. Miles, I don't think that should be a factor. Why not? I think you know why not. You don't really believe that there's going to be an addition to the family, do you? Can't rule that out, can we? Oh, Miles. I went to talk to the obstetrician the other day, and I, I finally I, I asked him for the first time if he thought it was going to be possible for me to ever have another child. What did he say? Well, he didn't say it in so many words, but that radiation treatment that I had, I, I just don't think it's going to be possible for me to ever conceive again. There's nothing definite about that. No, but there's a very high probability of it, and I think you know that, too. There's just never going to be a little brother or sister for Adam, and I guess I'm just going to have to reconcile myself to that fact. Can you do that? Yeah. I mean, look what I got. <laughs> I'm blessed, I know that. It's wrong for me to complain. And it's wrong for me to... to push for a house because of a baby that I'm never going to have. Never mind about the baby. We are 
are going to get a new place. You know what? We'll start looking right away, okay? Okay. downstairs in just a few minutes. I'd still prefer to come back later. Well, I would prefer that you stay. See, I'm getting a little bored with myself. It's uh, nice to have company. I didn't come to keep you company. And I warn you, Gunther, if you make the slightest move towards me or say anything I don't like, I'm going to scream this house down and make sure you're fired from this nice job. <laughs> well, uh, uh, what makes you think that I would do anything so foolish? Don't you realize that I was just joking with you those other times? It was simply a misunderstanding, Jody. It's Miss Travis to you. Yes, of course, Miss Travis. See, I was only fooling around, that's all. Uh, I didn't mean you any harm. You know, you're lucky. Very lucky I didn't call the police about you, Gunther, the night that you picked me up in Mr. Whitney's car. Well, yes, I admit that I did get a little carried away with myself. Uh, but you see, I had had a little bit too much to drink. Ah, but don't worry. Because you see, these days, I'm only drinking coffee. Can I give you some? No, thank you. You know, I am um, very sad about that night. I only wish there was some way that I could make it up to you. Say, you know what? I'll bet you like concerts and stuff like that, don't you? Please. Look, I'm getting tired of waiting. I'll come back later. Hey, you know what? Mr. Whitney, sometimes he gives me free passes to concerts, operas, plays. Hey. Listen. Won't you please let me take you to something some night? No. Would you please get out of my way? Boy, you are really something, aren't you, Miss Travis? What can I do to get through to you, huh? I try it rough, now I try it smooth, and you don't bend even just a little bit. How can I get you to like me, huh? There's no way, Gunther. Oh, there isn't, huh? Oh, you know, you would be so surprised at how many ways there are. I in told this you, world. if you come any closer, I'll scream. I swear. Well, go ahead and scream, Miss Travis. It's time for me to really got up. Gunther! What do you think you're doing? That's the second time you've asked me that question, Mr. Whitney. It's starting to sound like a broken record. Would you tell him to let me tell Take your hands off her. Don't you know that this little girl likes to be called Miss Travis? Let go of her, Gunther. Okay, boy. Look what you just went and done, Mr. Whitney. You scared her off. No. Are you going crazy, Gunther, or what? <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mr. Whitney. It was just a little friendly fooling around, huh? <laughs> Gunther, I told you to stay away from that girl, and now I come down here and I, I find you in my own house? I ought to fire you for that. No, you wouldn't fire me, Mr. Whitney. You need me too much. I mean, let's face it. Who would drive you around in your car, mix your drinks for you, beat people up for you? Speaking of drinks, you know, this coffee is really not doing too much for me. Put that down. Well, you're sure in the mood for giving orders, aren't you? I told you to put that decanter down. That's my best whiskey counter. Well, now, you certainly would like for me to have the best, wouldn't you, Mr. Whitney? All right, that's it. You're fired. Get your stuff and get out of here inside of an hour. And if you are not gone inside of an hour, I will arrange to have you thrown out. Oh, this is so good. And I just would love to drink this stuff all the time. Did you hear what I said? I said, get out! No, I'm not, and I can't go. You see, Mr. Whitney, Mrs. Whitney, she wouldn't like it. Mrs. Whitney would be delighted to have you disappear. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. What 
I meant was that uh, Mrs. Whitney would not like the truth. What truth? About what happened here last night. You see, I think it would come as a terrible shock for Mrs. Whitney to find out that you hired the man to kill her. 